Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Chad here coming to you, uh, not live. I've, I've recorded this, but I've recorded it specifically for us. And I'm sorry we can't be there in person. The, today was a, a kind of an unusual Sunday for us. Our The regional office that we work at is away on a missionary retreat right now. And it was last Sunday and this Sunday, last Sunday, we were very grateful that uh, Vern shared the word with us. And uh, thank you again, Vern, for doing that. I was uh, really happy to hear that. And uh, you did a great job. And this Sunday, we had scheduled Pastor Mary to speak to with, with us. She hasn't been here for a little bit. We thought, well, that'd be a great uh, thing. We had that all scheduled and set. But then Pastor Mary had uh, an eye surgery, uh, which went well. But she's recovering right now and uh, didn't feel comfortable driving here. Totally understandable. So we ask that you would, uh, she asked for prayer. She sends her greetings, but also sends her regrets that she's not able to be uh, here in person uh, with us in church today. And so as a last resort, I said, well, I'll at least, I'll, I'll just record a sermon. And I know it's not ideal, uh, but this is, this is what happens sometimes. So I'm looking forward to being uh, with everyone next week. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, I hope it was announced, uh, but I'd like to remind us that we're having a baptism after service next week where I'll be there in person. We're not going to do a virtual baptism. We're going to do an actual, real, physical baptism. You can't do a virtual baptism anyway. And uh, and uh, that'll be a nice celebration. We invite everyone to come join us after uh, service next week for that. We're going to have uh, lunch as well. Get something to eat together and uh, look forward to that. But nevertheless, this week, it's a recorded sermon. Not ideal, but this is what we're going to do. Hey, uh, we are going to be reading Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. That's, the, that's our, our scripture verses for today. And normally, the scripture is right up here on the screen. But now, you got my face here on, on the screen. I guess it's the wall. Uh, so we can't, we can't put the scripture up. Uh, but I'll read it. Obviously, you can hear it. But if you have your Bibles or if you have a phone or some kind of app where you can uh, download it, take, take a moment and open up Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. We're going to kind of do a little Bible study through it together. I, I hope it'll be a good time. Uh, if not, if it gets boring and you fall asleep, I won't know anyway. Now, typically, I can see you because I'll be there. But if you take a nap now, who's to say? I, I don't know unless somebody tells on you. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we are uh, going to be looking at this section of scripture, which is one of Paul's prayers, the Apostle Paul. And uh, what struck me as as I read this, and, and it struck me before as I, as I look through some of the prayers in the Bible, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but it seems like our prayers, the prayers that we typically pray, and the prayers maybe we would even pray in church, they don't often sound like the prayers we read in the Bible. Of course, there's the most famous prayer, the, uh, the Our Father, I guess we, we would call it uh, in English, the, the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father who art in heaven. And of course, that's a, that's a very uh, wonderful prayer to pray together, uh, to pray out loud, to pray as a church. In fact, even if you say it alone, which is totally fine, it sounds a little strange because you're saying our Father uh, who art in heaven. Uh, it's, it's meant to be prayed as a group of disciples, as a group of uh, Jesus followers. And, and it's good to pray that together. In fact, right now I'm, I'm recording this from my, my mother's home in Michigan. Uh, I've, I've had a crazy week. I was at missionary retreat. My grandfather passed away and I, and, um, he, uh, he, he lived a, a good life. He lived to a ripe old age, and uh, we were able to celebrate his life. He loved the Lord, and uh, it was good to be able to come together. But I had to leave missionary retreat, come here to uh, my fam see my family. I could see my son. My son Carson sends his greetings as well. And, uh, and there at the funeral, we celebrated his life. We remembered his life, and we spoke the words of Jesus' prayer together, Our Father who art in heaven. And that's, all that's just, that, that's wonderful. And obviously when we pray that prayer specifically, of course we're praying biblically because these are literally the words that Jesus gave us. And as we pray that prayer, that prayer really does transform us. And I encourage, uh, if, if it's not a habit in your life, make reciting the Lord's Prayer a part of your daily walk. 
And somehow those words, even speaking those words often helps transform our minds and our spirits and our souls to be better conformed to the image of Christ. And it's good that we would pray other things to God. We should be, uh, when we pray, and the Bible encourages to bring encourages us to bring all our prayers and petitions to the Father, anything that's on our heart, uh, bring right to the throne of God. We have that privilege bought for us by our Lord Jesus. And so it's good for us to do that. Nevertheless, there are times where it feels like the prayers in the Bible just sound different from our prayers. So we're going we're gonna to read uh, Paul's prayer for Uh, the church in Ephesus. And just as we read it together, I just want you to think, does this prayer sound like one of my prayers? Or does this prayer sound like a prayer that we would normally hear? And I want to, I'm curious to what what you think on that. Now, uh, well, let's, I I tell you what, let's just read it. And with that in mind, let's just read Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. If you have it there, you can read along or just uh, relax and listen to the soothing sounds of my voice as I read, <laughs> as I read the Apostle Paul's prayer here. Uh, again, he's praying this for the church. He says this, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. And here's his prayer, he says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he, God the Father, may strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted, being rooted and established in love, some translations say grounded in love, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how high and how deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. And before we continue, let me just say specifically a word of prayer for us as we (laughs) are meeting together uh, and looking at these words. Oh Lord, would you uh, illuminate our hearts and minds to better understand what it is you would have for us today. Open up our hearts, uh, open up our ears, uh, open up our spirits for your, that your words would uh, fill us, Lord, today. We would ask this, and I ask this, Lord, in the powerful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, I uh, wanted to kind of do a little bit of a Bible study here with us today to just to really break it down. I, I, I mentioned this before when we looked at uh, Paul's earlier, we we looked at Ephesians chapter 2 a couple weeks ago in church, and I just commented, and it's true all throughout Ephesians and most of Paul's letters, that the Apostle Paul really likes to pack in a lot of ideas and a lot of uh, thoughts and a lot of words into big, long sentences. And so it's helpful for me, at least, to break these things down. I'd like to do that for us today as we look at this prayer, but I'm curious how you felt about that prayer. And if you feel like Yeah, that sounds like a normal prayer, or if it sounded a little bit different than the prayers that we typically hear. Now, there's a few points from Paul's prayer that I wanted to, uh, that I that I noticed. A few things that I thought sounded kind of different than we normally hear. First thing Paul is asking for, in uh, right out of the gate, is that Paul says, "I pray that out of God's glorious riches," and Paul had. God has some glorious riches. Out of those riches, God may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. So his first and foremost, Paul says, I'm I'm, I'm dealing with this church in Ephesus, and not just the church in Ephesus, but all of these churches. And a lot of Paul's prayers sound similar. They all sound something like what he's praying here. Uh, A lot of Paul's prayers sound like this. And all of these churches have these uh, lots of really serious problems. They're going through persecutions. They're going through church splits. Uh, People are uh, doing all sorts of immoral things in these churches. People are falling from the gospel. People are uh, uh, lying and cheating and showing up to church drunk even. Like all, all sorts of just crazy problems in these churches. And 
what does Paul pray for? And this is the thing I think that surprises me. The thing that Paul prays for, first of all, is power. He wants God to strengthen us, the church, God's people. He asks that we would be strengthened with his power. And there's a specific time, type of strength that Paul says here. It's the strength in our, our inner being. He wants our inner being strengthened. So not, our, not so much our physical bodies, which is what a lot of times I think what we tend to pray for is the more physical type stuff. Hey, we've got sicknesses. We've got uh, death. Uh, my, my grandpa, uh, whom I'm here to visit, uh, to, to visit family with, to celebrate in his funeral, he succumbed physically to death. And usually when we pray, we'll pray for something like physical. We, we pray for physical strength so that we can endure whatever is going on or we can be healed from whatever is happening. And absolutely, we should pray for that stuff. Jesus prays for that. Jesus gives healing. Jesus empowers physically. But notice the prayer here. Paul says, I would like the church to be strengthened inwardly. Not so much that you'd be big and strong, like like me, like Chad. <laughs> uh, or, or, or that we would uh, be strong enough to handle these physical circumstances, but I want you to be strengthened in your inner being, in the core of who you are. I want God to pour out his riches into your spirit so that you would be powerful. Because that being powerful in your inter, inner being vastly outweighs how powerful you may be in your physical being. Our physical being, these flesh, this flesh wastes away and is not going to last far greater to have strength and power in our inner being. And now why does Paul ask this? He says, I want you to be strengthened in your inner being. Why? So we could be just amazing people? No. He says, so that, uh, here's why I want you to be strong in your inner being. So that Christ himself would dwell in your heart, which is where, I, I guess, which is where Christ is. We do have the spirit of Christ if we believe in Christ. But Paul uses this word dwell which in the Greek, it has this idea that uh, it's uh, this abiding presence. It means like to settle down, to like to, to plant your flag, to really like to, to move in, right? So we, we have Christ, obviously, but Paul prayers, Paul's prayer is that we would be strengthened so that Christ would dwell in our hearts, take a permanent residence in our hearts, that we would have constant access to his spirit and his power in our inner being. Or he says in, in our heart, and it's the same idea. In our in our inward being, uh, we would constantly be feeling the presence, the abiding presence of Christ our Lord. And we need to be strengthened, apparently, Paul thinks, we need to be strengthened in order for this to happen. And he says again, this happens through our faith. Uh, we, we talked about this a couple weeks ago when we looked at uh, last month's memory verse. We are saved by grace, so we are saved by his grace, and we access that grace through our faith. If you were there, or not, I don't know if you remember, but the faith was the straw that we got the, the grace through, right? So the grace is the thing, the water, that satisfies us, and the faith, the straw, where we get the water through. That's how we access it. Same thing here. He says, this happens through our faith, meaning this is not... This power that Paul is asking for is not our own power. It's something that we need to access from the outside, and we access it through our faith. That's how we receive the power. That's how we access it. But it comes from God. So again, it's important for us to remember. So this is his first part. The first part of it, first part of his prayer is that we would be strengthened with the strength that God would provide us, so that Christ would dwell in our hearts. And then he says something that's kind of similar. He says, and I pray that you would have power. Again, this is, uh, is this verse 16? Uh, he says, and I pray that you uh, would have power. And this, here's the other reason that he asked for power. So that you would be able to grasp how big Jesus's love is. I want you to have power so that Christ would dwell in you. And I pray that you would have power to be able to grasp how wide, how long, how high, how deep 
is the love of Christ. Now, <laughs> I have to stop and marvel a little bit for a minute because this, when I read this, I thought, well, this just doesn't sound at all like what I typically pray for. I don't want to blame the church or anybody else. But, but typically, in my prayers, I'm praying for something that I'm, I'm going through a difficult time. I'm uh, uncertain about uh, this, this pain that I'm feeling or I got word uh, about something in my job, something with my family, something with my health, and I'm worried about it. And I want to bring this to God, and I'm asking God to fix it, <laughs> right? This is, by the way, that's a totally legitimate thing, and you will find examples of those type of prayers also in the Scripture, and Jesus himself encourages us to pray those things. But nevertheless, isn't this kind of a strange prayer? That Paul says, I wish that you guys had the power, or I pray that you had power, why? Why do we have power? Why should we have this power, Paul? I just, I, I pray that you would just be able to grasp how big God's love is. Man, I, I, that's what I want. That's what I want for my church, Paul says. Now, that's shocking to me because that's, it doesn't sound like my prayers, typically. Maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll just, again, point to myself. And Paul says, I just wish you could grasp how big this is. And then he says something ironic. He says, I, because I want you to know this love. I want you to know it. And when he says the word know, it's this, when the, when the Bible uses the word know, at least in English, and whatever it would be in, in German is the same thing. It means to really know something. To like have an intimate acquaintance and experience with. So like when the Bible talks about uh, uh, Mary found herself pregnant, even though she did not know Joseph, it means like know like, really know, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, it means to have this really experience with it. Paul says, I want you to know the love of God that, and it's ironic because the love of God surpasses knowledge. So Paul says, I want you to have power to know something that surpasses knowledge itself. I want you to know something that's really too big to even know. You say, well, how do we do that? How can we know something that's too big God's love is too big to know, but how are we supposed to know it? Well, Paul says, that's what I'm asking for the power for. I'm asking that God would strengthen your inner being so that you would begin to grasp and really see how amazing God's love is for you. Now, in order to have this power, he says, we need to be rooted and established or grounded in love, in his love. So, he uses two kind of illustrations here. I want, we need to be rooted in love, meaning like picture a tree with deep roots. And it's where is it planted? It's planted in the love of God. And we need to be grounded on love, like it was built on, the, the established on. Like a, there, there's a foundation and we need to be firmly planted or planted, I guess, is, but, but built on this foundation of love. And so as you're praying, or maybe do me, do me a favor if we could all close our eyes right now. And I guess if you don't close your eyes, I wouldn't know it. But just picture, close your eyes and picture, picture ourselves. Uh, we're, well, we're seated now. You're seated. So, but your feet are on the ground. Now picture, instead of on the ground, picture that your feet being on the love of God. It is not enough just to be standing on it. You need to be established on it, Paul says. So picture, and you need to be rooted in it. So with your eyes closed still, just picture roots coming down from your legs and your toes and your feet and just dig in deep into, not the ground, but the love of God. The love of God. Let you just be rooted in it and just keep on as you're praying with God in your life. Keep on burying those roots deep into the love of God, deep into the love of God, deeper and deeper. And so you that you would be firmly established. Now we can we can open our eyes again. But sometimes it's helpful for me to actually picture picture what it is that Paul's praying for. I want you to be rooted in that. Dig those roots in deep. And um why are we asking all these things, Paul says? So that you would be filled with the fullness of God. B bury those roots in deep so that you will be able to drink in 
the goodness and the fullness of God. Wow, uh, it sounds incredible. And it sounds maybe a little strange. You might be you're wondering, Chad, Chad's getting a little strange today. Well, I guess you're free to think that. I'm not, I'm not there to <laughs> you think whatever you like. But um, this is an amazing picture to me, at least. And the more I picture this and pray for this for myself, the more power I find in my inner being. And I just personally testify that uh, this is an incredible prayer. But you may be asking, and the same question that I would sometimes ask, why is this the thing that Paul, if Paul could pray for anything for his churches that are going through all these persecutions and struggles and difficulties and sin and destruction and death even, Why is this the thing that Paul wants to ask for? Of all the things that Paul could have prayed, he's really just basically asking us that that we would really know God's love. I wish you would know God's love, really, at the end of the day, is what he's saying. Well, okay, fine. Thanks, I guess. I've got a lot of things I need prayer for, Paul, but knowing God's love, is that really... What makes that so important? It doesn't doesn't really sound that important. And this is one of the things I feel like just sounds different than what I would normally ask for. Uh, He's praying. Well, one of the reasons it's different, I think, is he's praying for something that we need to uh, receive. We typically would think of prayer as something like this is something that we're telling God. When we go to prayer, we're telling God things. We're, We're telling him things that he needs to know. He needs to know about my medical diagnosis. He needs to know about this pain that I'm experiencing. He needs to know about this uncertainty that I have. And um, and so we, we tell him that, and that's what prayer is. But that's not all of what prayer is. And in fact, that's, that's just about half of what prayer is. Half of prayer is us telling God things. What's the other half? The other half is God telling us things. If in our prayer life, we are only telling God things. We're missing out. We, we're only doing about 50% of prayer because the other half is not only just as important, I think the other half might even be more important. I, I, I think that listening to God and hearing what God might have to say to us, in fact, I think that's far more important than whatever we might have to say to God. Uh, like, like Jesus says uh, in the Sermon on the Mount, you know, we ask for God for things. We bring these things to God. We, he tells us to pray for our daily bread. But at the end of the day, your Father in heaven already knows that you need him. He already knows what you need. Uh, so when you pray and you tell God things, you're not really giving God any kind of information that he doesn't already know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he already knows what you're going through. He already knows what you're feeling. Now, we continue to to pray these things, uh, it's good for us and it's good for our relationship for that to happen. But never forget that an, an extremely important part of prayer is to receive what God may have for us and to open ourselves up to what God would like to say to us. So instead of your prayers and mine are the same way. I'm not blame, I'm not pointing fingers. But instead of our prayers being just us trying to fill God with the knowledge of us and what's on our heart, Paul says, I pray that God would fill you with the knowledge of him. That's what that's what really needs to happen in, in, in your prayers. So, but again, the same same thing. Uh why, though? Why is that so important? Why is he praying for this? What is, what is that going to do for us? God needs to know my problems so that he uh, can get me out of my problems. God needs to know my problems. And here, also in my prayer, I'm going to offer God a couple different solutions that he could. Hey, God, here's, here's some of my ideas on how you could fix this problem. You, I'll give you the ability to choose one of these solutions, but here's what, here's what I want from you. Well, Paul doesn't have anything like that here. Paul just wants us to know God's love. Well, okay, but what is that going to do for me? Well, he doesn't really spell out exactly why, but he certainly thinks it's important. And whenever he prays for people in his churches, he's always praying something like this. Yes, people are going through difficulties and hardships, but he doesn't tend to pray for those specific instances. You don't often find Paul praying for 
uh, you know, help out this person or I pray for this person or I pray for this person. I think one of the reasons is that Paul finds this so important to pray for is that if you are filled with the power that comes from knowing God and experiencing his love, no matter what difficulties you may be going through in this life, they will pale in comparison to what God is going to pour into you and can pour into you. In fact, you'll be able to get through whatever it is you're going through and even more life might throw at you in the future if you are rooted and grounded in God's love and you have God's power surging through your veins. You will be able to get through any of life's difficulties if you have what Paul is praying that you would have here, in other words. Jesus said, in this world, you will have difficulties. In this world, you will have troubles, but take heart, he says to us. I have overcome the world. And Paul says, oh, I wish you would know this. I wish you would know how strong God's power is and how big God's love is for you. If you could grasp, if you could truly grasp the love of Christ, you will be able to see how small that problem is you're dealing with it really is. And that how in the end, God is going to overcome all of those things and he will wipe away every tear from your eyes and he will make everything new. Oh, if we would just be able to grasp how long and how wide and how big and how deep and how glorious the love of God is for us. If we could just get a glimpse of that, Paul says, that's what we need to be praying for. That's what we need to be strengthened for. Uh, One of the uh, main problems, I think, in our world today, really, no matter where you go, and maybe even it's reflected in our prayers, is that we're constantly, constantly thinking about ourselves. Even in our prayer life, we're thinking about ourselves. We're thinking about what struggles we have and the struggles that we're going through. And again, that's not, I don't want to say that's all bad, but if that's our focus, if that's all we're seeing, we're, we're getting the wrong viewpoint. The whole world is encouraging us right now to think of ourselves more and more and more. Think of, it's just, that's all the world is telling us. Me, me, you, you, you're the most important thing. You decide, you, you, you. Remember these words before us today. Uh, and the words we read, the, 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 remember the words of last month's memory verse. God's grace is not from works. It's not from something that you've done. It's a gift from God. Stop But the more we focus on ourselves, the more we tend to not even see that gift. We have to stop thinking so much of ourselves. It's not like we have to uh, humiliate ourselves and think that we're just terrible. We just need to stop thinking of ourselves so much. It's a a terrible uh, temptation that that we're all tempted with, especially in the world as it is today. But in our prayer time especially, take the focus off ourselves. Be firmly rooted and grounded in the love of God and let his power flow into us. This is what I'd like to challenge us uh, to pray this week. That we would expect and look forward to this power that Paul seems to think is is readily available for us. He says, "This is. I pray this that, that you, together with all of God's people, this isn't just for seminary professors or pastors or uh, a big, high up, important people in the church. No, no, no. This is for everybody that knows Christ, from the smallest child to the oldest uh, person uh, alone in a nursing home. It's for everyone. It's for all the Lord's people. This power is available because it comes through our faith and it comes through being rooted and grounded in the love of God. Let's pray that this week. Now, I'm not saying don't pray for those other things. Pray for those other things. But don't let those things and those problems and yourself be the main focus of your prayer. Jesus didn't say, uh, Jesus did ask us and tell us to pray for our daily bread. But that's just one line in that prayer. 
The rest of the prayer is about the holiness of God, that his name would be glorified and magnified and hallowed, uh, that his kingdom would come on earth. Uh, He didn't just say, God, give us our daily bread, and God, give us the bread two days from now, and God, give us more bread three days from now, and oh, God, give us bread four days from now, oh, and God, I'll need bread five days from now, and bread and bread and bread. (laughs) It's just a part of the prayer. It's not the main focus of the prayer. Uh, The focus on the prayer was the love and holiness of God. As you walk out this uh, church today, we're gonna, uh, the, the team's going to uh, come up and, and do a song here at the end in just a moment. And you feel free to come up now, Mom. I'm just, I'm just wrapping up now. But as we, after we sing and pray and we, we walk out from this place, um, sometime this week, as you're, uh, for me it helps to go outside, but if you can't go outside, just stay inside. But uh, there's this old uh, poem from the Middle Ages. Nobody really knows where it, it uh, came from. But uh, it's been written and made into hymns and things like this. But it's just a wonderful idea. And it says this. And I encourage you to think about this as you're outside sometime this week. Uh, maybe you go for a walk or something and just contemplate the love of God. And it says this. It says, If all the sky were a parchment, and if all the oceans on earth were filled with ink, And if all the blades of grass, if every single blade of grass and tree on earth were a pen, and every single person on earth were a scribe, we still wouldn't be able to write the love of God that is given for us. We couldn't possibly grasp, and we can't possibly grasp how big God's love is for us. But... Oh, that we would have the power to just sink into that love and fall into that love and let it wash over us. Let it fill our cup to overflowing out from our lives, out from our hearts. Uh, because no matter what it is you're going through, whatever worries and burdens you have, and we all have them, I have them myself, the worries of this world are very heavy uh, on us all. But God is stronger and mightier and bigger, and he will overcome all of those things. And he doesn't want you to just wait to experience that sometimes in the the future. He wants to give you his power now, being rooted and grounded in his love. Before we sing, let me close. I won't have time to come back and do the benediction. So let me give you the benediction now, and then we'll sing and dismiss. But the benediction is the very next verses today. In in Ephesians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, Paul's prayer continues, and he says this. Uh, if you, so if you would stand with us, uh, stand for just a moment, just to receive the benediction. I'll pray this over you. Now to God, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Let's sing to him today.